Welcome to our second lecture on prokaryotes. In this lecture, we will take a look at how bacteria reproduce. And we'll start with bacteria's sexual reproduction, which is called conjugation. Now, I've got sexual reproduction in quotation marks because this isn't true sexual reproduction the way that um, meiosis and fertilization work, which we'll see in just a minute. So we start with two bacteria, and we'll call them bacteria A and bacteria B. Okay. Now, remember that bacteria have a single circular chromosome. Right. So what happens to start is bacteria A makes a copy of part of its chromosome, and that copy winds up onto a small circle called a plasmid. All right, so step one, A copies part of its genes onto a plasmid. Okay, then remember that these little projections on a bacteria are called pili, and if we've got just one of them, it's a pilus. So, bacteria A then reaches out a pilus to touch bacteria B, okay? This plasmid then uncurls and travels down the pilus to bacteria B, okay? So, step two, the plasmid travels through the pilus to bacteria B. Now remember, bacteria B already has its own chromosome, okay? So at this point, bacteria B may make the plasmid part of its own chromosome, or it may leave the plasmid separate to pass on to future generations. Now this is a bit different, like we said, than meiosis and fertilization. As you can see, there are no offspring from this. It is a one-way um, transfer of genetic material from one cell to another. It's not reciprocal, things are not getting swapped, it's only a part of the genes, not half. And so while this does increase our genetic variation um, among b bacterial populations, it does not actually constitute true sexual reproduction the way that meiosis and fertilization do. Interestingly enough, this can also happen not only within a species, but between two entirely different species of bacteria. So that also increases our genetic variation dramatically in bacteria. Now let's look at their asexual reproduction, which is called binary fission. And this word binary fission just means two and split. So in binary fission, bacteria are splitting in two. However, this is much simpler than mitosis. So let's walk through it. We start with one bacterial cell. That bacterial cell then duplicates its chromosome. And remember, there's only one chromosome, okay? The chromosomes attach to the side of the cell, and then the cell pulls apart, and you end up with two identical bacteria cells, okay? Much simpler than mitosis, no interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, no spindle fibers, all very simple. Interestingly, this then leads itself to some easy-to-do math to predict how many bacteria we have at any given point. So let's take a look at that. Um, we've got the beginnings of our chart with our bacterial reproduction here. I'm also going to add two columns, the number of bacteria and the number of generations or the number of times we have replicated. Okay, so we start with one bacteria and we're going to call this generation zero. Okay, that bacteria splits in two and then we have two bacteria. And at this point, we are now at our first generation, okay? At our next generation, each of those bacteria split in two. So we've got four bacteria at generation two, all right? In our next generation, generation three, each of those four bacteria split. And we end up with eight bacteria, okay? And then in our fourth generation, each of those eight split in two, and I'm not going to draw them all because that gets tedious, we have 16, okay? Now, it would be a real pain to go through every generation and have to draw and count our bacteria this way. So conveniently, there is actually a way we can calculate how many bacteria we have based on what number generation we're on. So one to the first power, or I'm sorry, one is actually equivalent to two to the zero power. So at generation zero, we have two to the zero bacteria, or one bacteria, okay? At our first generation, we have two to the first power, which is two. 
At our second generation, we have 2 to the second power, which is equal to 4. At our third generation, we've got 2 to the third, which equals 8. And at our fourth generation, we've got 2 to the fourth, which equals 16. So by using the generation number as the exponent for this exponential growth, we can actually calculate how many bacteria we have. And then we can apply this to a larger equation, so we can calculate how many bacteria we have at any given point, no matter how many bacteria we start with. Okay, so take a moment to copy this equation into your notes, and once you've done that, we're going to define our variables. Okay. So our variables in this equation, one of our variables is n sub zero. Right, so that zero is a subscript, and n sub zero is the number of bacteria that we start with. All right, so on the previous page we started with one, but we may start with millions. It's hard to tell. Um, so n sub zero is our starting bacteria. n sub t then is going to be the number of bacteria at time t, or for our purposes, the number of bacteria that we end with. Right. T, then, is the amount of time that has passed. Okay. Um, and then this little g. The little g is the number of generations. And just like on the previous slide, that makes our exponent. Now, there's actually one more variable that we need to know and calculate that does not appear in this bigger equation. And that is big G. And big G equals the time per generation. Okay, and like I said, we don't see big G in our equation, but conveniently, we can calculate it because big G equals T divided by little g, and conversely, little g equals T divided by big G. So if we have t our time and one, either the number of generations or the time per generation, we can calculate the other variable. So let's take a look at how we apply this. Our first example is going to be this one. If three bacterial cells replicate every three hours, how many bacteria will there be after 27 hours? I want you to pause the video, try this problem, and when you've tried to figure it out, come on back and we'll do it together. All right, so hopefully you have tried this, back, or tried this problem, now let's work on it together. So I always start by defining my variables, and when I do, I always make sure to include units. So let's look at this problem and see what we have, okay? Our first is our three bacterial cells. This three bacterial cells is our starting bacteria. So our n sub zero, or starting bacteria, equals three bacteria, okay? Then we know that they replicate every three hours, okay? Now remember that big G is our generation time, so big G equals three hours per generation, okay? And then the last thing that we know is that we're looking at them after 27 hours. So our total time passed then is 27 hours. Now if we take a look at these, we don't have enough variables to start using the big equation. So we're actually going to start with our small equation to figure out little g first. So remember that little g equals t divided by big G. Okay, so in this case it equals 27 hours divided by 3 hours per generation. Okay. Now, there's a reason that I'm carrying my units through in science. We use our units the whole way through our problem so that we know we have the right units at the end, okay? So we know that 27 divided by 3 is 9, and our hours divided by hours cancels out. Now, when you divide by a denominator that is already in a denominator, it actually flips up to the top, okay? So our little g then equals 9 generations. Okay. Now we can turn to our big equation. As a reminder, our big equation is n sub t equals n sub 0 times 2 to the g power. Okay. So n sub t equals 3 bacteria times 2 to the ninth. Okay. Now you can use your calculator to figure out that 2 to the ninth equals 512. Okay. And that 3 times 512 equals 1,536. Now, since we carried our units through, we know that our, we are ending with 1,536 bacteria. Okay. So take a moment to get that in your notes. Once that's done, move on to the next practice problem. So this is our next practice problem. After 14 hours of replicating every two hours, a scientist counts 512 bacteria in her liquid culture. 
how many did she start with, okay? So take a minute, practice that in your notes, come back and we'll do it together. So what we know from this problem, our time is 14 hours. They replicate every two hours, so that's big G. And she, that since she's finishing after 14 hours is when she counts 512 bacteria. We know that's our N sub T, so N sub T equals 512 bacteria. So we begin this problem just like the last one by finding little g. So little g equals t divided by big G equals 14 hours divided by 2 hours per generation. All right? Hours cancel out, generations comes to the top, 14 divided by 2 is 7. So little g equals 7 generations. All right? So now we come to our larger equation, n sub t equals n sub 0 times 2 to the g. In this case, we don't know n sub 0, so instead we plug in n sub t, which is 512 bacteria, equals n sub 0 times 2 to the 7th. Okay. Now 2 to the 7th equals 128. Okay. So now we divide both sides by 128, and we get 4 bacteria equals n sub 0. So we started with 4 bacteria. Take a moment to make sure you've got that in your notes and you understand it, and then move on to the next problem. So for our next problem, after incubating for 10 hours, six bacteria have multiplied to become 192 bacteria. What is their generation time? Again, take a moment to try that, and then come on back. Okay, so let's define our variables. So our total time is 10 hours, okay? We start with six bacteria, so that's our N sub zero. And they've become 192 bacteria. So that's our N sub T. Now in this case, we can't start by finding little g. We don't have enough variables to do that. So instead, we start with our larger equation. Okay. So if we plug in N sub T and N sub 0, we can then divide both sides by the 6 bacteria that was N sub 0. And we get that 32 equals 2 to the g. So now we need to figure out how, how do we do this, okay? Um, your logarithm function on your calculator is probably not going to work since this is a base 2. So what I personally do is I start multiplying. So I do 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 is 8. Times 2 is 16. Times 2 is 32. Okay, so I made it. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2 times itself, 5 times is 32. So another way to say that is 32 equals 2 to the 5th, which equals 2 to the g. Okay. Now if two exponents have the same base, you can cancel out the base, and it means the exponents are equal to each other. So 5 equals little g. Okay, so now we can go back and calculate their generation time. So remember that the generation time equals t divided by little g. So here it equals 10 hours divided by 5 generations. So big G equals 2 hours per generation. Okay. If you can do that problem, you can do any of the rest of them. So now let's take a look at what we can do to graph the growth of our population. Okay, so take a moment to copy these axes into your notes. Once you've done that, restart the video. So this is the kind of population growth curve we would see for a bacterial culture in a plate like we cultured in class. When we first put our bacteria in the plate, their growth is kind of stagnant at first. We call this the lag phase. And in this phase, the growth rate is equal to the death rate. And this is happening because they're still acclimating or getting used to their new environment. However, after they've gotten their, used to their new environment, growth takes off. And we call this our log phase. This is the phase where the math that we just did on the previous three slides actually applies. So in this phase, they are growing at a much faster rate than they are dying. Okay. They're able to do this because they have abundant resources and nothing is stopping them. 
okay? So the population grows. However, after some time of doing that, their population will flatten out again, okay? Or at least their growth rate will flatten out again. We call this their stationary phase. Okay, and this rate, once again, growth is equal to death. This happens because the resources have started to become limited. They're not gone, but there's not enough to support infinite growth. And in ecology, we would call this that they have reached their carrying capacity. All right, then our last phase is our death phase, okay? In this phase, you can tell by the negative slope that death is greater than growth. Basically, the resources have run out, and as a result, all the bacteria die. Okay, so this is what we would see in our plate in the lab. Not usually happens in nature because bacteria can move and travel in nature. All right, so our last slide then is about the abiotic conditions affecting the bacterial growth rate or how fast they divide. So things that can affect bacterial growth rate include moisture, pH, temperature, salinity, air, and by that we mean the amount, the type, and the quality, and nutrients, the amount, the type, and the quality, as well as light. Okay. So all of those can affect how fast our bacteria reproduce.